Today we'll go over how to schedule dark periods around polyphasic sleep schedules. I'm one of the people who developed the artificial dark period and have put a ton of time into researching it and hope to share how the specific schedule groups should be built with the dark period in mind. We'll also talk about the ideal timing for the dark period. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So today's topic is dark period scheduling and it's a part of our series on the dark period. If you haven't checked out the previous videos on the subject, be sure to do this before watching this video. Or don't, I can't force you. So the thing here is that we want the dark period to span uninterruptedly between preferably around 8 and 10 hours in length, regardless of the schedule we're on. That's our initial goal to strive for. And when possible, we also want to end a sleep by waking up from the sleep with ending the dark period. Okay. okay, what I mean by this is that when you wake up, it's really easier to do so by blasting your face with bright light. But you can't really do that during the dark period. So it might be beneficial because of that to extend your dark period until your uh, first nap or your second core or third core so that it's much easier to wake up from that because of the light blasting. But we also have to balance out that having a dark period makes you more tired with the ability to fall asleep easier. So if you feel like your productivity is significantly impacted by having a dark period and it's for example 10 hours in length, it might be beneficial to shorten it to 8 hours and thus miss out on the ability to fall asleep easier for the next sleep but staying awake and being more productive instead of that. The third goal we want to go for is to have the dark period start between one and three hours before our slow wave sleep core. Um, melatonin is important for ensuring that the quality of slow wave sleep is high and that we get a lot of it during the core and having a dark period before sleeping helps ensure that enough melatonin is built up. A safe number to go for here is to have the dark period start around two hours before the SWS core. Yeah, yeah, the three main points. We talked about this before. No, 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 I definitely didn't say that you should keep a dark period during the day. Uh, how long have you been on this schedule? Three weeks? Oh my lord, I'm coming over right now! Okay, now we have our three main points down. We want the dark period to be between 8 and 10 hours in length in total. We want to end a sleep by ending the dark period and we want to start the dark period two hours before our SWS core. Uh, we'll go now through each schedule line and describe the schedules and how to apply a dark period for them. If you need a refresher on what the schedules are, we have made a playlist on them and you can check that out from here, the link. The first line we'll go through is the biphasic line. With segmented, you want the dark period to span between the cores. Here, the dark period is going to be around 12 hours in total, um, but that's okay. If the gap between the cores is longer, you might want to consider shortening the dark period and ending it somewhere between the cores instead, so that you don't extend it for too long. The next biphasic schedule we'll just discuss is siesta. And here you want to have the dark period until around an hour after waking up from the core. And finally, there's Everyman 1, where you just need to have the dark period before the core. You don't actually need to use it at all after waking up. So you can wake up by blasting light to your face. Okay, and we continue with the Everyman line. Showing all schedules and their variations doesn't unfortunately fit into this video. So I'll just share the general tips for how the everyman schedules and the other schedule lines too are going to be applied with the dark period. So if your first nap is relatively close to the core, you should have your dark period extend until the end of it. 
But keep in mind that you still want the total length of your dark period to be between 8 and 10 hours in length. If you're on an Everyman 2 with a core starting at 11 pm and your first nap at noon, it doesn't really make sense to have the dark period drag out all that way. So just cut it shorter in that case. With the dual core line, you want the dark period to span between the whole core gap if possible. Though, there's a limit to this as well. Um, because of how the dual core lengths are on the standard dual core schedules, you most likely want to have a dark period between your cores if the gap between them is 5 hours or shorter. But if your cores are further apart than that, uh, you would likely need to cut your dark period shorter and introduce light between the cores. Um, and that's if the dark period is longer than 12 hours in length, because that would be too long. If your cores are further apart than 5 hours, consider cutting the dark period shorter. Um, though this does of course depend on which specific schedule you're on. Now we come to the tricore line. On triphasic, you want the dark period to last between the night core and the dawn core. On tricore 1 and tricore 2, you want at least two of the cores to be covered with the dark period preferably three, uh, but it of course depends on the specific schedule that you're on. Still, as I've said many times in this video, strive to go for a dark period length between 8 and 10 hours. And finally, we come to the wackiest schedule group, the nap-only schedules. The thing here is that you can look at applying a dark period here in two different ways. Either you wish to pursue a long-term nap-only schedule, or you just want to do it short term to get a feeling of what it's like. If you're doing nap only schedules and plan to stay on them for long term for a long time, you want to use a dark period there. But if you're only doing it short term, a few days of messing up with your circadian rhythm isn't really going to kill you, so you don't need to apply it there. But I want to point out that if you're doing a nap only schedule, in, uh, with a goal of going for a gradual adaptation or using it as an acceptation method, you should use a dark period. Because when you switch to the next schedule, it's going to really benefit you from having the stable circadian rhythm. Now, I explicitly told you to have a dark period on naptation. Yeah, of course you're sleeping during the day now. You've messed up your circadian rhythm. No, 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 it's not permanent. Please don't tell my parents. So when would the ideal dark period take place? You'll do it the easy way by having it align with the local day-night cycle of your country, since you don't have to entrail a shifted circadian rhythm that way. But if you live near the poles, it might be worth to consider something here. The day and night lengths aren't really consistent. You might have a very long time when you don't really see the sun at all, and another time when it really doesn't get dark outside. So to tackle this, you want to use an artificial dark period throughout the year. What's also important to consider here is that you need to make sure that your photo period is established efficiently. So if you live near the poles, it's wise to purchase a daylight lamp to blast your face with in the morning, just to make sure that you're setting your photo period efficiently. I'll link a pair of these in the description. Okay, that's all for today. Please share in the comments below if you extend your dark period to cover your course or to your first nap, and if you feel like it's better than if you just blast your face with light the moment you wake up. We'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Anyways, take care and have pleasant naps, people! Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via our secure Ko-fi page as this helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.